I saw Terence ploughing his field today, Thomas told Bertie excitedly. Bertie scoffed. You see that old fuddy-duddy every day. So, replied Thomas, I see you every day too. That's not what I mean, huffed Bertie. You see the same sights all the time. Don't you get bored? I always see exciting new things when I drive through town. Thomas was offended. I like what I see along my line, even if it is always the same, he retorted. Thomas huffed out of the station, leaving an annoyed Bertie behind. Silly tank engine, pouted Bertie. I know I see more exciting things than him. As Bertie drove through the town, he kept his eyes peeled for something new. It was a rather quiet day, and even Bertie had to admit there was nothing exciting to be found. He passed a statue of a lion that had just been delivered to the town square. Oh, that's not very exciting, he sighed. Unless... Bertie chuckled to himself as a devious idea came to mind. When the two friends next met, Bertie fiend excitement. You'll never guess what's in the town square. People, replied Thomas uninterested. Even better, continued Bertie. It's a lion. It had a long brown mane and huge teeth. Thomas thought it sounded thrilling, but he wasn't about to tell that to Bertie. Oh, well, well, well he stammered. I, I, I much prefer the sheepdog I see on my branch line. Thomas raced off without another word, while Bertie chuckled victoriously. Silly old lion, silly old lion, Thomas muttered as he puffed along. If only I could see it, just once. Annie and Clarabar rather hoped they'd never see it. At the station, Thomas saw one of the shopkeepers on the platform. Excuse me, sir, he asked, but have you seen the lion? Indeed I have, he replied. Look here. He turned his newspaper towards Thomas. There, on the front page, was a lion. Or rather, a lion statue. Thomas could hardly believe it. Oh, that Bertie, he fumed. He tricked me. Oh, <laughs> chuckled the shopkeeper. Bertie's got a big imagination for such a small bus. He boarded Annie as Thomas ran around the train. A smirk spread across his face. Yes, he chuckled. But mine's bigger. <laughs> The next morning, Bertie pulled into the station. Thomas was already there waiting. Thank goodness I have a chance to speak with you, he beamed. The shopkeeper told me he saw something extraordinary yesterday. He did? Oh yes, went on Thomas. There was a travelling circus. It had jugglers, clowns, mimes, even elephants. Oh, that, replied Bertie hastily. Of course I saw that. I just thought the line was more exciting. Without another word, Bertie raced away, leaving a smug-looking Thomas behind. Bertie raced through the town, his eyes darting this way and that. A circus can't be hard to spot, he thought. So where is it? That afternoon, Thomas arrived at the station. To his surprise, Bertie was nowhere to be seen. That's odd, he thought. It's a rare thing for Bertie to be late. Just then, the station master walked up. Please go to the next station, he said. Bertie's in an accident. His passengers will be waiting for you. Now Thomas was worried. He raced down the line as quickly as he could. As he drew into the station, he saw Bertie in a ditch close by. The angry passengers stood on the platform. What happened to you? 
cried Thomas. Oh, I was so busy trying to find the circus, sighed Bertie, that I didn't look where I was going. I hit a bottle, got a flat tyre, and ended up down here. Oh dear, sighed Thomas. He felt very guilty. Then he saw Sir Topham Hat. Thomas, he said sternly, I don't know why you come up with such a fib, but you've caused a great deal of trouble. You will take these passengers to the top station, then go back to your shed at once. Percy will take Annie and Clarabel for the rest of the day. Perhaps that will give you time to think about running your line honestly. So Topham Hat walked away, leaving Thomas feeling very ashamed. A few days later, Bertie had been repaired and met Thomas at the station. I'm sorry for causing your accident, Thomas began. No, no, cut him, Bertie. It's my fault. I shouldn't have lied to you about the lion. I'm sorry. Thomas smiled. Well, you were certainly right about one thing. What's that? quizzed Bertie. Seeing the same things all the time can be boring. Especially when all you can see is your shed door. The sight of terrors in his fields has never been so wonderful. And with a hearty chuckle, the two friends went back to work.